Next talk is by Kevin Green and Taylor Apgar from Oregon State University. The floor is yours. All right, thank you. Uh, so I'm Kevin Green, this is Taylor Apgar. Uh, we are students in Jonathan Hurst's uh, Dynamic Robotics Lab at Oregon State University. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the controller that we've been working on for the biped Cassie. So you can open with it working out in a park in, uh, it, on our campus. So this is a completely uh, blind walking controller. It's only sensors it's using are proprioception, so things like the IMU and the uh, encoders. Um, and then it receives a high level control, kind of like the control from Mikhail, but from Taylor in this case. And so the general overview of how this works is that we have these high level things like desired velocity and contact sequence that get fed into a model predictive controller on a very simple reduced order model. This then generates some body and foot trajectories, which we then track with uh, an operational space controller. And this goes by a number of names, such as the whole body controller we just heard about, or task-based control. This produces motor torque commands, which we directly track with the low-level hardware. Yeah, so the, uh, the high-level planner is basically choosing your, um, your center of mass trajectory and your footsteps over a number of steps. Uh, we want to run this online as fast as possible, so the easiest way to do to simplify the online optimization problem is basically fix your um, contact sequence. And I think for our application, because it's blind walking and we only have two feet, uh, and we have good hardware, and a lot of other things, it actually works pretty well. Um, like you can handle touching down early or touching down late without really any problems. Uh, reduced order model we use is uh, just a linear inverted pendulum. Uh, for double stance, we basically just vary the center of pressure from the previous stance foot to the next stance foot over the phase. And all of this, you know, you just have your uh, linear uh, constraints for your dynamics and your kinematics. And then we put a quadratic cost on essentially minimizing your acceleration squared and trying to get close to the, uh, the target velocity that the user is providing. Um, and these you know, like we heard before, the X and Y or the horizontal axes are completely decoupled. So these are just two small quadratic programs that we can solve at uh, kilohertz or faster. And, yeah. and so we end up tracking these uh, trajectories using operational space control. So the basic idea is that we have these points on the robot we care about that correspond to points in our reduced order model, mainly the feet and the main body. And we can write these just directly as a function of our generalized coordinate velocities. We take rid of that, we can get the generalized accelerations of these points we care about, and now we can minimize the error of that as a quadratic cost in our QP we're gonna form. And what we do is we have open parameters, or open uh, variables in this program uh, for our generalized accelerations, the motor torques we're gonna select, and the ground reaction forces. And really, the part that makes this all work really is that fact that in those variables, our rigid body dynamics are linear in all of them. So we can just form it as a linear constraint. Additionally, we can add some stuff on our feet, foot forces for friction cone, and we can add actuator limits. And this is incredibly fast to do online. We can run at a, at a kilohertz. The real question though is how do we take these generalized trajectories and get an acceleration command to track? And through the magic of linear controls with feed forward, it works out quite well. Yeah, so this is just some uh, testing in the lab. Basically, this is a uh, eight centimeters step up, step down that it doesn't know about. Uh, obviously, I, dip, I wasn't driving it very well, so I, you know, hit the uh, swing leg into the board, but it was fine, it just kind of kicks it over. Um, you notice, like, because of the operational space control and the really fast online replanning, it's, you know, when it touches down or steps off unexpected disturbances, it's just really passive and it's very, it's very compliant, because a lot of this is uh, really through the feed forward of the inverse dynamics. Um, and then we just have other things where we have completely unknown terrain. Uh, I think this one we even decreased the, or increased the step time a little more, um, which is you know harder. The faster you step, really, the more stable you can be. Um, so yeah, the kind of the main things here is that you, you'll see sometimes where it actually will slip and it, uh, it can catch itself pretty easily. And also, again, tripping over a board, but uh, you know, it doesn't have to have really tight swing leg control or anything. It can just kind of take care of it by constantly replanning. Um, I guess we can kind of move on to questions while we just show videos. Perfect. Questions? Yes. 
Uh, real quick, uh, I'd like to thank our uh, we would like to thank our funding and Enjoy Robotics for the awesome hardware, and we have more videos we can keep playing while we talk. Would it as well work? So if it, it if it would stumble, would it recover? Uh, it depends. Please if repeat he, the question. Okay, so he's asking if uh, basically on that swing leg, when the first one caught the edge, it's really going to depend on where that lands and if the other one makes it over. I've had it before where the first one stubs, but your center mass isn't too far away, so you can get your other one to swing up, and it uh, recovers fine. Um, you can also like push it as it's trying to step up on it, and it it's okay. But it's some of it really is up to you know if you stub both of your feet into the boards, you're not you kind of lost all control authority there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other quick question? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the question is, you usually stay within a pretty small step length, uh, except for maybe in the recovery a little bit. Is that due to limitations of the linear inverter pendulum? No, so a lot of this is that we got it working relatively recently. So I think we took a lot of the filming with like the orange cover and stuff last week. Um, yeah, we're gonna increase the speed and everything and you can actually get the, the uh, longer stride. But right now it was kind of just, we still need to tune things up Thank you. to get to that point. Okay, thank you. Yeah.